Okay, we are ready. All right, so we're going to start with the cons. We're going to welcome the entire video game group. Please give them a big hand. Good morning. I'm Luke. This is Nadia. This is Hayden. This and this is Wida. And we're going to teach you about the uh, negative effects of video games. A study by the Entertainment Software Association shows that 70% of Americans play video games. As a result, the video game industry ranks a close second to the movie industry as the most popular form of entertainment in the U.S. Because of this, the video game industry is currently worth approximately $138 billion. But did you know that the first home gaming console was a failure? It was called Odyssey and was priced at $100. Despite its lack of success, it led to the development of the very popular toy game system. Just because something is popular and makes a great amount of money does not mean it's good for society. We will teach you about the negative effects of video games. These include impacts on social life, mental health, physical health, as well as an increase in violent tendencies. Hello, my name is Vinton. I'm Ashton. I'm Alex. And I'm Sydney. And today we're going to be talking to you about the pros of video games. Video games were first developed in the mid 20th century as a means by which to test and display computing power. In the 1970s, they were commercialized as arcades and home consoles. Today, around 70% of American children live in a house with video games. Although harmful in excess, video games have been demonstrated to improve brain function and have shown potential in fields such as medical training, education, and exercise. Video games have been proven to have a negative effect on the player's social life. An individual's social life has a major impact on their quality of life. In order to be happy, it is essential to have strong, stable relationships. Video games, however, weaken player social skills, making it difficult to form bonds with other people. Playing video games isolates children and provides a distraction from family and peers. According to addictionrecovery.org, those who spend their time playing video games spend more time in solitary seclusion, spend less time with real people in their lives, and are often viewed as socially awkward. Even MMORPGs or multiplayer games are limiting. Children may use multiplayer game as a, games as an excuse to avoid confrontational social interaction or as a replacement for face-to-face -face conversation that would otherwise cause them to feel anxiety or stress. The player is also able to create an online avatar persona, giving the player the ability to alter his or her identity and pretend to be someone else. This behavior may lead to low self-esteem and feelings of inadequacy, thus making the player even less likely to socialize, socialize with other people. Relying on video games as an excuse to avoid or replace socializing with other people will indefinitely, will indefinitely lead to a decrease in social skills, furthermore stunting the social growth children and adolescents need in order to be content with their lives. Raise your hand if you or someone you know has had surgery before. All right, that is um, most of you. Laparoscopic surgery is a method of surgery performed by small instruments inserted into the body and guided by external manual controls and a screen. A study by the American Medical Association has demonstrated that surgeons who played video games generally performed laparoscopic surgery 27% faster. These same surgeons also performed laparoscopic surgery with 37% higher accuracy. Although not all children will become surgeons, all surgeons were once children, and anything that can help our next generation of medical professionals gain a footing in the quickly changing world of medicine technology will inevitably save lives. Video games cause violence. It may seem like a common misconception, but according to many studies done by the University of Illinois, video games have been shown to increase aggression in young children and teens. In over 12% of crimes committed at school are closely related to video games. Even the National Institution of Health stated that video games, that adolescents become more accepting to the thought of violence because of video games. In 2014, people who played video games were more likely to bring a weapon to school or work. In, on April 20th, 1999, 
Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold brutally murdered 12 students, one teacher, and injured many more. After, afterwards, both boys were reported to have an unhealthy obsession with violent video games. In conclusion, violent video games cause aggression and violence to be more normalized in our society today. Benjamin Franklin once said, tell me and I forget, teach me and I remember, involve me and I learn. In today's time, most video games commonly played by children and teens help them learn. Some examples of these types of video games on the screen behind me is Trap Adventure 2. It's a difficult game that increases problem solving skills. Another video game is Pop Tropica, a popular children's game that introduces students to competition. Reflex Math, is my last example. It's a math, a difficult math game that gets increasingly more difficult as the levels go on to complement students' math skills. Critical thinking can be increased by 40% when these types of games are played for over a month. Critical thinking, seeking novelty, thinking creatively, and doing tasks the more difficult way are characteristics look for in employees and leaders. All of these skills are contributed to by video games. Thank you. Excessive use of video games has been linked to many mental health problems, including anxiety and depression. It is well known that violence is connected to anxiety and depression among children and adolescents. It is understandable that research would be done to determine if playing violent video games has the same effects. They do, stated by Cyber Psychology, Behavior and Social Network. Over 5,000 young people took part in the study, which showed that students who played violent video games had more anxiety and depression than those who played non-violent video games. However, it was not just violent game players. Overall, the participants who spent more than two hours per day playing video games had an increase in anxiety and depression and a decrease in self-esteem. Clearly, the use of video games, regardless of the type, has a negative impact on the mental state of those who play them. While you all may have grown up playing Pac-Man sitting on your couch, my friends and I grew up breaking a sweat while playing Just Dance and Wii Sports. We all know walking is one of the most common forms of exercise. A study done by pediatrics showed that video games had a two-fold increase in energy expenditure compared to moderate intensity walking. The boy on the screen behind me participated in a study which compared recess to extra gaming. The kids that participated in the study lost 3% body mass index and cut cholesterol by 7%. Not only did it yield these results, the researchers said that the kids didn't even know they were exercising. They were having so much fun. That's why video games are such a useful tool to exercise with, because the kids that are playing them don't even understand that they're exercising. Thank you. Ever since video games have been created, adults have been worried that they can cause serious damage in kids, which they do. But the first obvious example is that it can cause eye strain. Extensive viewing the screen can cause something called computer vision syndrome, which is primarily found in adults and is a type of, computer, of, and it's, is a type of eye strain that happens when you look at a screen for too long. Affecting computer vision syndrome can be migraines, discomfort of the eye, and worst of all, blurry vision that can last for the rest of your life. But video games don't just hurt your eyes. They can also cause... Uh, they can also cause insomnia. Uh, a study from NCBI states that uh, kids who play video games between 7 and 8 o'clock lose 2-3 hours of sleep per night. This can uh, stunt their growth, shorten their attention span, and hurt their schoolwork. Uh, worst of all, it can cause obesity. A different study from NCBI states that since 2006, the obesity rate in children ages 12 to 19 has gone up 20%. This is primarily when kids play video games. So yes, video games does overall hurt kids' health. Students who play video games have been shown to be more intelligent than children who play outside. This is because video games improve cognitive function, which is why they would be an excellent addition to this recreation center. Advanced attention span, memory, and executive control are all benefits of playing video games. 
A study done by the Comparative Media Studies Department at MIT stated that people who play video games have better problem solving skills and increased mental clarity. In action video games, fast and accurate decision making um, trains the brain to make real life decisions faster and quicker. In a study done by the University of Illinois, it was shown that gamers scored an average of 30% higher on a skills reaction test. Overall, video games improve intellectual and cognitive ability. Over 51% of U.S. households own a gaming console. That's over 162 million people. This comes to show that video games have become a popular and reliable source of entertainment. However, despite their popularity, it's been proven that video games have had a negative impact on society as a whole, primarily due to their effects on social, mental, physical, and behavioral health. Video game usage has caused children to be less social. They spend more time playing video games than they do socializing with other people. Also, video games have contributed to an obvious spike in obesity. As of 2015, 18.2% .2 of adolescents are obese. This is three times the percentage that it was in 1980. Video, video game usage and addiction has also been linked to symptoms of anxiety, depression, insomnia, and carp carpal, tunnel, son, excuse me, carpal tunnel syndrome. Lastly, Video games have been proven to cause violent tendencies in children. By exposing children to graphic video games, we are normalizing violence in their lives. A local community center is considering adding video games to the after school and weekend programs. All evidence considered, however, is clear video games should not be added to their list of programs. Instead, we should be teaching children to be more active and social rather than allowing them to live their life out in front of a screen. Video games prepare surgeons for medical careers they equip students for life situations, promote fun ways to exercise, and improve cognitive function. O'Shea said on Power Lunch, gaming is taking media share from every other form of media. They are growing faster than movies and TV. Due to their increased popularity, your kids are not going to stop playing video games. They should be included mentally and challenging, mentally challenging and physical video games in your recreational center. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you guys have to work side of slides. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, after each conclusion, then, and after everybody's concluded, that's good. Uh, needs to, needs to, needs to. So, uh, teachers, any questions? Yes. Uh, say that uh, video game players are more intelligent than non players. Are you suggesting that we should include? video game, the rec center instead of books? Well, um, I was talking about video games as a recreational, like, funner way of doing things. And so children can study books if they would like, but it seems to be video, it seems that video games would be a more preferred option. I'm very interested in that, um, and so I'm wondering, with that information, what was the source of that data, and how large was the um, sample group? Well, for the first study, um, the one from MIT, it was one from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology from the Comparative Media Studies Department, and then the second one was from the University of Illinois. And so the second one, they had gamer, they split um, non-gamers and gamers into two groups and had them take a speed reaction test, like to test how fast the reaction time is. And the gamers um, scored an average of 30% higher. So it's not specifically intelligence Yes, the first one, the first one, um, the MIT one was about problem solving skills and increased mental clarity. Very good, thank you.